knocked on the door, walked into the room. I sat down facing the window. I had my suit on, sense in the gloom. They said in somber tones, we were to be sacrificed, no delay. The emperor and his henchmen licking their chops on small fry today. They're closing us down, we're just a number. Think of old England, merry and gay. We're in Lady Dixon's beautiful garden, watching the sun going down on the day. Nice song that is. That's a band called the Corn Cricks. Uh, she's a good singer, that girl, that lead singer. I don't know what her name is. Let me see what her name is. I can't find it. I have to f- wiggle this thing out there. Her name is Laura Kerr. There, she's good. She sounds uh, like Juliet Turner with the mainspring fixed. That's really good. That's a song called Lady, Lady Dixon's, of course, after Lady Dixon's Park had been fest. And there's another song here. There's four songs here called Lady Dixon's Mexico. I played that earlier. I'm going to play that. Le- I didn't play it earlier on the radio. I played it earlier upstairs where I live. I play that during the course of the program. It's really good. And there's another one called Forty Pounds a Week, and the other one is called My Brother Luke. You could call that a, an EP, I suppose. The Concrex. It's called Lady Dixon's. Excellent. Uh, good morning. The number to ring if you want to contact this program is 08459 555 678. The email address is jerry.anderson. That's G E R R Y, and as in German, jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk. And the text messaging service for those of you who would have scored if you'd had the opportunity is 81771. Now, as I mentioned to the fat boy earlier on, and you probably didn't hear that if you're up here in the Northwest, but elsewhere you would have heard that I am not the type of person that would uh, take pleasure in the defeat of England, but I'm just delighted. I am. Because, you know, God did that. You can imagine God up in heaven saying yesterday, just boys, uh, speaking of something, just boys, uh, I'm looking at that, uh, I'm looking at that goal and, and, and England and Germany in 1966. I'm looking at that for 40, 40, what's that? 44 years now. I'm looking at that goal for 44 years, Jeff Hurst there. And no, he just touched the ball and it goes off the crossbar and just a yard inside and they give it the goal and Kenneth Wilson home, whatever you call him, he says, ah, oh, there's, they think it's all over. And it is now, he says. I'm fed up, he says, listen, says God. I'm fed up, listen to that there. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to organise it. That it happens again and they don't get the goal. They don't get it. It'll be in off the crossbar and a yard and obvious for all to see and the referee will say, not at all, no, no way, boys. 
But you see, that's what happened. God did that. And uh, here's a letter. It says, uh, this is um, a complimenting England. Uh, David Cameron, your man Clegg, Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen, Anthony Warrell Thompson, Giles Brandreth, Sandy Toxfig, Compo, Little and Large, Lily Allen, Keith Allen, Ant and Deck, Sir Alan Sugar, Jeremy Clarkson, Jeremy Pexman, Chubby Brown, Bobby Davro, the Yorkshire Ripper, Pitt the Younger, Pitt the Elder, Pitt the Inbetweener, William Shakespeare, Lord Nelson, Max Wall, Sir Walter Raleigh, Belly Hill, Esther Ranson, Sweeney Todd, Eamon Holmes, what's he doing in there? Ken Dodd, Worthington Sweets, Katie Price, Jordan, Henry Cooper, Big Ben, The Wombles, Dick Turpin, Les Dennis, yes, Les Dennis, Winston Churchill, Twiggy, Churchill the Talking Dog, Lady Thatcher, can you hear me, Lady Thatcher? Your boys took a hell of a beating. Your boys took a hell of a beating. For you, the World Cup is over. Signed, A. Hitler. If you were in my movie, I'd have you as the doctor. Small black bag and a big black coat I'd have you make a house call to the woman You could lay your diagnostic hand Upon her belly and her throat If you were in my movie You could be the detective You could sit behind the desk With a question on your lip Examine her for motive Investigate the scene In the ever-present danger Keep the holster at your hip If you were in my movie 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 You could be the priest Long black frock, white collar at the neck You could come to the confession You could give a girl a thrill You could save her from her passion Keep her body in check If you were in my movie If you were in my movie If you were in my movie Pinstripe man with the cigarette Go running down the alley With a double-crossing blonde Explaining to the jury That you hadn't done anything yet If you were in my movie 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 Suzanne Vega, of course. That's a song called If You Were In My Movie but from an album called Volume 1 Love Songs EP. A uh, gentleman writes to me called Stephen. He said, has no one picked up or indeed uh, interviewed Fancy and his extraterrestrials? Remember Fancy and his extraterrestrials? He came on here last week discovering, uh, well, he, he basically relating to me the story of how he'd been... Uh, taken up from Earth by extraterrestrials and prodded in outer space and then placed back in Northern Ireland. He's very confused about the thing. The man is either a comic genius or insane. Often seamlessly interchangeable, I found these people. Very funny. Myself and my wife were, there's a word here that we don't use, we're mm -mm -mm ourselves laughing, uh, talking about uh, prodding and taking. Great shows this week, as a regular contributor would say. That's a person called Stephen and his partner Catherine, who are down in the sunny Dingle Peninsula. I would like to talk to you, Fancy, today. We'll try and get Fancy today to see if he's, if he's been prodded again. Uh, yes, indeed. Hello, good morning. There's someone on the line. Hello. Hello. How are you today? No, not that good. Why not? No, I've um, I had to go to the hospital last night. Oh, dear. I have asthma and brain Oh, my God. And lung disease. 
Oh, well, so this, weather, this weather... I can't weather is, get any oxygen at all. Oh, this, low of oxygen. This weather so, isn't good for you, is it? No. It's very, it's very humid, actually, isn't it? So, I want to know if anybody out there would have a cure for, you know, asthma and bronchitis. Well, you know, I don't know if there's anything they can really do about it otherwise, you know, other than, you know, conventional uh, medical treatment. So are you looking for somebody who would have some kind of a charm or something yeah. like that? Are you probably going down the road of the doctors, have you? Oh, I've been there for nine months. Are you fed up with them, are you? Oh, fed up with everything. Can't get a breathing. Well, that's a terrible, terrible thing. My my father, uh, God rest him, had, had a terrible time with that. He had uh, that kind of minor's disease, you know, mm-hmm. and, and he... Uh, he, he was on a, an oxygen thing for, for years and years and he used to get very short of breath and it used to really make him angry. It makes you angry, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It, it does. does, actually. A lot of people don't realise that. No. That it's, it's, so, it's so debilitating that it's not painful. No, it I just took makes the flu. you angry. I took the flu, you see, and yeah. this all comes out of it. I know. Well, you see, not, not, that's quite unusual that if, 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 if it came out of the flu, is it? Really? I had the flu in nine months. Oh, God. Anyway, so you're looking for someone who would maybe perhaps help you in some way. Have a charm or cure. Or, or maybe some old-fashioned uh, yeah, uh, remedy. remedy because you've gone to the doctors, you've, you've probably got a house full of pills and medicine, have oh, you? <laughs> on to be honest and steroids and inhalers and manipulators. So you, you want something. Okay, so anyone out there who suffers from what you suffer from, and if they've had any relief at all from any uh, source that maybe we don't know about, give us a ring here, 08459. Okay. Five 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 six seven eight. We'll do what we can for you. All right, love. Oh, Don't be letting it get you down. Eh? Don't be letting it get you down. Oh God! Because if it gets you down, you see, it's it's doing its work, isn't it? Yeah. It's doing its work. Keep cheerful. I know it's hard, but you should. You know, the main thing is you're not. Anything. You're probably you're probably in a wee bit of pain from the arthritis, are you? No, well, not really. No. Well, you see, I that's just good. Just had a pain in my lung, and I had to go to the hospital last night with it. Well, don't you worry. As long as you have no pain, I mean, there's people in the same boat as you who are in great pain. So no, you, I have no count, pain. Only that sore lung. Count your blessings. Uh, yeah. All right, love. All right. Anyone who can help you, I'll I'll put them in touch with you. Right, that'll do, lovely. Not at all. Okay. Right, bye. 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 Uh, Anderson, the physician. He lies self. The number to ring if you can help that lady is 08459 I hate to go on about this, but people write to me. Greetings, kid. This That was it, he said. This is the big one. At 1,500 hours on Sunday, Tommy Mankat and I left our respective war rooms and marched towards the television. I had three pillows and a double duvet up my gansey, pretending to be Winston Churchill. Tommy Mankat was dressed as a miniature Hitler, complete with moustache and blonde Eva Braun doll clutched under his arm. Tommy glared at me and said, Blitzkrieg, Donnan and Blitzen, your boys are in for hell of a beating. I said to Tommy, where did you get that faux German accent? I got it in faux clochel. I lit a cigar, took a nip of brandy from my hip flask, and replied, never in the field of battle. If so many kick so much for so little, we will fight you on the football field. We will fight you on the terraces, we will fight you in the dressing rooms, but we'll never, never surrender. Tommy, also known as Hitler, went into a frenzy and said, mein Gott, Making Führer angry. Don't make Führer angry. You wouldn't want to see the Führer when he's angry. We then sat down to watch the England-Germany football match. As the final whistle blew, I leapt to my feet and I yelled, Donkeys, I said, led by donkeys. Tommy kissed his Eva Braun doll and said, For you, the World Cup is over. I knew what I had to do. Upstairs in my room, a bottle of whiskey and a revolver were waiting for me. As I made my way slowly up the stairs, I heard Tommy whisper to his Eva Braun doll, she has gone to kaput herself. Then Tommy began to gustab round the room while singing Deutschland über alles, das alles ist Deutschland, das alles ist wir. Das gibt in der Grande Wand, das nur hier schon ein Falsch. Das alles Deutschland, dann sind alles well. Wir leben und sterben all. Gesunden Fuff und Waffen. Schwein, Schwein, das alles Inchen, denn der Deutschland. I don't know what that means, but I enjoyed it. Five minutes later, I came running down the stairs, wrapped in the flag of Ghana, and said, it's not over till the fat lady sings. Today, I too am a ghana I looked at the feline Hitler and said, Tommy, why is there always a player called Mueller in the German football team? He smiled and said, you've got to be kidding to ask me that question. Later in the day, I found Stephen Nolan crying like a baby in the gutter. Chins up, Tubby, I said. It's only a game of football. Football! said Tubby. The supermarket has run out of prawn cocktail crisps. 
I boxed the fat boy's ears and sent him off to Melvin Bragg for bookends. Nay, let's all get behind Andy Murray. <laughs> It's clear what we have to do. Support the Scot. Our hopes have been dashed. Where's Northern Ireland when you need them? Hank William, he came up from Montgomery with a heart full a hard luck country song. But Nashville, Tennessee, they didn't understand him Cause he did things Differently Than the way that they were done But when he finally Made it to the Grand Old Opry He made it stand still He ended up On Alcorn Hill Elvis Presley He came Jackson with a brand new way of singing, a brand new way of dancing, and even from the waist up, he gave the world a thrill. He ended up on alcohol and pill. Alcohol and pills, it's a crime. Wild and reckless Then there was Grand Parsons Then there was Jimi Hendrix The story just goes On and on I guess it always will They ended up On alcohol And pills Alcohol and pills It's Think they might have been happy with the glory and the fame. The fame don't take away the pain, it just pays the bill. And you wind up on alcohol and pill. They won't say but when they pull poor old Hank Williams out of that Cadillac Coupe de Ville, he ended up on alcohol and pills. Alcohol and pills, it's a crying shame. You think they might have been happy with the glory. That's a song called Alcohol and Pills. Uh, that's uh, Tom Snyder. No, it's not Tom Snyder. Tom Snyder's an American broadcaster. It's Todd Snyder. 
Gentleman uh, writes to me and he said, I was driving uh, around the country yesterday uh, trying to get away from my wife and I had the good luck, bad luck, make up your own mind, to hear Uncle Hugo's last Sunday show. Oh, oh that's right, Hugo's got a, Hugo Duncan's got a Sunday show on Radio Ulster between two and four. I think it's the last one for a while. I, uh, as Hugo bid us all a sad farewell, all the backroom staff were in the studio, including a girl called Emma who had brought along a wee dog with a very strange name. Was that our Emma? No, uh, Emma is here. Our Emma is here, and I've inquired, I've asked her. And she said, she's not guilty. It wasn't her who was in there. There was another Emma. Apparently a lady called Emma Kane was there. It wasn't our Emma. I gotta know, he said. I gotta know. He's been to America, you see. I just gotta know. And ask Emma if the, wee do- if the wee dog's name was Tushy or Thrashy or Tashy or something like that. Tashy. I had a wee dog called Tashy. You're mixing me up. And he also said, have you realised, for, for no reason whatsoever, he said, Americans have got so fat, doctors in, the America, doctors in the US have issued a statement saying that breakfast is the tenth most important meal of the day. Hello, good morning. Thank you for that, sir. Uh, that's the type of information we need. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Oh, hi. 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 How's it? How right. yes, going, Jerry? That's all right. Who's that? Uh, it's Matthew Michael Henry here. How are you doing? All right, Matthew. How are you today? Uh, not too bad, Jerry. I've, just, I've lost my dog, so I was just wondering if you could... Help me out with it. It's a wee spaniel called Ruby. Ruby? I was yeah. just, talk- just talking about a dog a moment ago before I talked I, to well, you. Well, I, I heard you. <laughs> just goes to show you, people think that these things are planned, but they're not. <laughs> so you've lost a wee spaniel. How did, how did you lose a spaniel? It's not easy. Well, I left it out the back, and I think it's, uh, it's sort of I got out under the fence. And this was, uh, this was two days ago now. Uh-huh. And I've been cycling. I live over uh, Ravenhill, and I've been cycling all around. Looking for it, I went all around the Ormo Park, went around Cherryville, I couldn't find her, so... So you figure it's throughout Ormo Park, uh, Ravenhill, that kind of uh, area? Yeah, that kind of area, yeah. Oh, um, Ma's away on holiday at the minute. When she gets back, she's going to kill me, so... She will have your <laughs> drawers for britches. Well, I think, I think you know her, Jay. Mm-hmm. So what kind um, of... That's a wee spaniel, right? And what colour is it? It's a... Uh, what kind of a spaniel is it? I mean, are, are there that. different types of spaniels? Or King uh, it's, spaniel? a, it's a Springer spaniel. It's, it's white with a, a brown face. White? And, uh, Right, uh-huh. wee brown pats on its back. Uh huh. All right then. You're in big trouble. Do you realise that? Oh, big time, big uh-huh. time. She's way increased at the minute, so. Uh huh. When, when when did the wee dog disappear? Uh, three days ago. Three days ago. Uh, did it disappear yeah. in, the, in the afternoon? <clears throat> well, I think you know more than anybody. Tell you, my Mary Jones. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I ask you? Were you watching football when this uh, dog disappeared? Um, yeah. Come on, you see, a lot of pets have taken the opportunity to flee because they realise that men, men are sitting watching the TV. Oh, you're, yeah. an, you're, you're, an act, you're an actor, aren't you? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. You, were, you were in that recent uh, that play, weren't you? Uh, the, the recent play, what was that called? Of uh, Rock Dogs or Over that, the Bridge? That's right. Oh. Were you the man who was in that? Yeah. Uh-huh. I, heard, I heard great reports about that. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Well, that was really, you know... Uh, you know Fair play, I'm actually right? in rehearsals at the minute. I've snuck off here. <laughs> uh huh. Well, what are you rehearsing now? What are you doing now at the moment? Uh, dancing shoes. Dancing shoes. Well, who, who wrote that? Is that one of your mums or what? That's uh, that's my and Martin. Yeah. Ah. Well, do you enjoy that? No, it's kind of difficult trying to break into that when when your mum and dad's so kind of involved in it. So but fair play to you for trying it. You know, because it's, <laughs> it's hard. Very much. No, but it'll open doors for you. But then people will expect a lot of you, won't they? Yeah. Yeah. But uh. sure, that's that's good. Sure, if you're sure if you're good enough, sure it'll be a challenge, won't it? <laughs> no, I, I heard great reports about. No, seriously, people were saying you were really, really good. I didn't get oh, along. With, I didn't get along with myself. I, I can't go to the theater, you know. Yeah. I can't go. Do you know why? No, no. Do you know why I can't go? I can't believe. Why? I can't believe it. I, I can't. Do you know the way you suspend belief when you go to the theater and you sit yeah. down and there's the proscenium march and you sit there and a story unfolds in front of you and yeah. and you take and it you're in. You're sitting there going, "There's a bunch of people." And they're going, to have, they're, going, they're going to have a cigarette now. You know, as soon as your man gets off, he'll be lighting a fag around the back. I just can't, I can't, I can't get into it. I can't get into it. There's only one play that I ever, ever, ever get into. And, and no, I have to say, I, I enjoyed Stones and Pockets. I really enjoyed that because it was, I thought yeah. it was really funny. And, and, but the, the only other play I ever really get into, and I went to see, um, uh, oh, what was, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, Glen Gar- <laughs> Glen Gary, Glen Ross. I went- oh, right. Oh, no, I heard that was very good. Never, I never saw it. I went to see that recently uh, in, in London. Adrian Gillen was in it. Adrian Gillen. Yeah, was, that, from- uh, was Richard uh, Dormer in that? That's right. It was yeah. fantastic. It was fantastic. Yeah, no, I've heard that. I heard that was very good. Oh, that was the best thing I was. But then you see, it's all on the right, and you see, it just it has to go. Anyway, never mind me. Listen, what about, <laughs> what about your dog, your white spaniel? 
Yeah, right. we All white right, spaniel. Okay. Brown face, and her name's Ruby. Ruby. <coughs> Ruby. All uh-huh. right. Does anyone see a wee white spaniel? Uh, do we call her anything on it? Like that? Yeah, she's got a collar on her. Um, I'm not sure what the colour collars, but the, the details and all is on the collar. So I don't even know what colour the collar is. No, but she's a timid wee thing. But uh, is she? I, uh, hopefully she'll turn up anyway. Okay, we hope so. Uh, anybody who sees her, give us a ring here. Oh eight four five nine five 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 six seven eight, and we'll give you a ring if there's any word before your mother comes back and beats the lighting out of you. That's good. Cheers, Jay. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks very much. Not yeah. at all. Bye. Coming up the news soon at 11 o'clock. I'll be back at about four minutes past. 20 blackbirds are sitting on the fence. For 20 years, and I've been trying to mix the sounds. But it don't look too good, Mama. Don't look too good for me. You know, I was waiting in the wall, but I only got a wash out the sea. to 95 FM and 1341 medium wave. This is BBC Radio Ulster. And at 11 o'clock, this is the BBC News with Keith Burnside. A man in his 30s has died in a car crash in County Fermanagh. It happened in the early hours of this morning on the Bally Connell Road in Derry Lynn. Police believe there was only one vehicle involved. And six men have been taken to hospital after an accident involving a stolen car in County Antrim. Lucy Gulligley has more details. The crash happened on the Lathamstown Road near Dundrod early this morning. Four of the men were thrown from the car, which was the only vehicle involved. Four are in hospital and three are seriously ill. Two other men who were in the car have been arrested in connection with stealing it. Police said they believed that the car had been taken in Lisburn. Part of the Lathamstown Road has been closed. 49 new jobs are being created at an aircraft parts manufacturer in Kilkeel. Just over £5 million is being invested at Thompson Aero Seating, which develops seating designs for major airlines. Nearly a million is coming from Invest NI. At least 18 people have been killed and more than 40 others injured when a lorry carrying chemicals exploded in the southern Pakistani city of Hyderabad. The blast is believed to have been an accident. From Islamabad... Ali Mahwal. Footage from the scene shows shops and vehicles destroyed by the blast. Electricity pylons were brought down too. It happened at a truck stop on the outskirts of the city of Hyderabad in southeast Pakistan. Local police say pressure built up within the chemical tanker, causing it to explode. With hundreds of Pakistanis having been killed in attacks by the Taliban in the last year, there were initial reports that militants could have been responsible for this explosion but police have said there's no evidence that's the case. The Ministry of Defence has paid tribute to a British Army bomb disposal expert who's been killed in Afghanistan. The soldier from 101 Engineer Regiment died yesterday during an exchange of small arms fire in Helmand. His family has been told. The weather now with Angie Phillips. 
After the mainly dry and for some bright start, Clyde will continue to stream in to bring spells of showery rain for the afternoon, especially across Fermanagh, Armagh, Down and Antrim. And it'll feel a bit fresher today too, with temperatures for most in the high teens instead of the low to mid 20s that we've been used to. The showery rain will move away fairly smartly this evening though to leave a dry night. BBC News. BBC Radio Ulster. Travel News. As just mentioned in the news, there's been a fatal accident on the Ballyconnell Road in County Fermanagh. The road remains closed, that's just south of Derry Lynn. And in County Antrim, a serious accident near Dundraud has meant that the Leithamstown Road also remains closed at Cochranstown Road. Meanwhile in Belfast, traffic's quite busy heading towards Tates Avenue and the Barcher Road from Broadway. And finally at the International Airport, this afternoon's EasyJet flight from Malaga, which was due at 5 past 1, is now expected at 2.45. And Jordan reporting. Travel news on BBC Radio Ulster. On Talk Back with Wendy Austin today, you've heard the pundits. Now it's your turn. Why were England so bad? Let me know. Attacks on gays, attacks on migrant workers. Why is there so much hate out there? Attacks by birds too. Have you been pecked by a pigeon or dive bombed by gulls in your streets? Maybe you've spent half a day recently trying to get information from a website. What makes them useful or useless? And councillor Ming the Merciless tells us how he's becoming Ming the Mayor in the Republic. Join me and join in the debate and talk back at 12. Thank you, Wendy. I haven't been packed for ages, no matter how hard I've tried. The number to ring if you want to contact this programme is 08459 555 678. Email address jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk. You hear that? jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk and text messaging service 81771. Spluttering. It's the drink. Messages. Jesus Christ, you never found. I would feel much better if we only talked more. But I would feel much better, my love, if I always wasn't so good.
happy star He lived alone in Mexico He checked out of his life He left a blur to sorrow in his drive The whole of Hollywood thought he was dead But he kept one step ahead Making boho films incognito Never seen by a soul I don't wanna go The memories go The daughter of the cameraman She had a pretty birthmark on her cheek She pondered on the meaning of her life Of anonymity She broke into my house She broke my heart She put a pistol to my head Coming down to Mexico Or I will shoot you dead I don't wanna go Down to Mexico I'd rather rest my head On the Rocky Mountain snow I don't wanna ride Back through to below We've eaten the honey Now we can let the memories go Heaven knows, but it's not every day The dead man cries from the grave When you hear this song, I'll be long gone anyway It's a game I play Corn Craigs again, that's a song called Mexico. That's quite different, that, isn't it? I like that. Right. Uh, I often sit here and uh, it's, a, it's an unusual thing to sit here every morning because all human life is here. And uh, a lot of people contact you, tell you different things and you get a kind of a cross section of, you know, what human life is really like. You know, a lot of people out there, uh, the things that haunt them from their past life, opportunities squandered, a lot of people sitting at home, no longer young, saying to themselves, what would have happened? What kind of life would I have? I've had if I'd done this, you know. Many of them lead to tortured lives. Maybe many married men, maybe perhaps forty years of age, saying to themselves, "You know, I am living a life of quiet desperation." Other people are happy, but then there are other ones, people out there, who are happy, happy, and so happy that they worry about little things. For instance, a man writes to me, 
This is how happy he is. He said, I would love to know if the thistle seeds in the bird feeders will grow if they fall on the ground below the feeder. How happy is a man like that? That's all he has to concern him. I'll have to try and find that out because I know it's going to keep you awake at night. Hello, good morning. Hello? Hello? I hear a radio on the background. I hoped it wasn't me. I, I hear it, Jerry. It is. It <laughs> is. Oh, yes, I always have you on. I'll that, turn it down. That's okay. I like to be turned down every now and again. <laughs> I don't You're like to hear man. myself. Because there's always a kind of an echo thing. Yeah, if you would turn I it down. I know. I've got it turned down low now, Jerry. Sorry about that, pal. That's all right. I'll... I, no, you say, because I can still hear it. You're lying to me. You haven't turned it down at all. I have. You have, and I can still hear it. Look. No, it's gone now. It's gone now. It yeah. doesn't really matter. That was quite uh, benevolent, that, actually. Because sometimes <laughs> when the radio's on, you hear this kind of... I know, I know. Sorry about that, pal. It's quite all right. Listen, Jerry. I'll tell you what happened about uh, two or three Sundays ago, I was listening to Hugo Duncan, but he wasn't on. And the other <laughs> chap... And, That's the best way. And the other chap that was doing it for him mentioned... Uh, Two girls called the Banjo Max from yes. uh, Ballymena. Uh, yes. And he said that he, he <laughs> thought that you knew them. <laughs> Did he? What, what? Or not? He, he may have said that. Uh, the Banjo, what? You the, call them? the Banjo Max. They used to play the banjo. Uh, there yeah. were two sisters. Banjo Max. They played for, uh, they come from uh, uh, Ballymena. Did anybody ever tell you you sound a little bit like Roy Walker? Is that right? You do actually. Have you ever well, been? Have you spent some time in England? I've been here uh, sixty years, Jerry. Oh, you're in England now at the moment. I am indeed, yes. <laughs> but I always listen to your program. <laughs> what part of England are you in? London. As John Bennett would say, "What a beautiful part of the world." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I come from a place called Streatham. I don't know where you know it. Streatham. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you've been living there for sixty years. I mean, what age are you now? Eighty-four. Eighty-four. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. You, you you don't sound you don't sound as if you're eighty-four. Well, I'll I, I come over here to have a job as a professional boxer with a man called John Muldoon. He he owned all the Irish dance halls. Yes, yes. The uh, Gary Owen, the Pride of Iron, and uh, I've been in the Gary Owen. Were you? Oh yeah, years ago in the sixties and seventies, I was in the Gary Owen. That, that that's that's been going for a long time. But they tell me it's all finished now. It's all not. Oh, gone. it's all gone now. Yeah, it's all gone. That all finished around the eighties and nineties. I know, I know. Well, and you were a boxer, were you? What what kind of a were you a lightweight, heavyweight? What were you? Uh, middleweight. Middleweight. And did you fight in these Irish clubs? No, 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 no. But but Dr. John Muldoon was my manager. Uh huh. And who was he? Tell me about him. Who was he? What kind of a guy was he? He, um, he owned all these Irish halls? He owned all the Irish dance halls. He was a real nice man. Uh, he never took a penny off me from the day one to the day I finished. Even though you, you were boxing and, and being paid and stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, he never, he never stopped one penny, Jerry. Honestly, he never took a penny off me. You sound really very, nice chap. You sound really... You do really do sound like Roy Walker. <laughs> you, you do, because that's, you, you've got the kind of accent when Roy went away. I know, like, he was probably I know. talking like that when he went away. And then, yeah, he changed, and then he changed it just a wee bit, and your voice has changed in yeah, the same way. Yeah, but that's a Ballymena Scotchman, isn't it? <laughs> that's, what they, that's what they say, the Ballymena Scotchman. That's right, yeah. It, it, um, some people, when they're from here, their voice changes in a peculiar way. And, I know. and yours is the same. You, you go up at the end of the, your sentences. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Jerry, for letting me know. I wouldn't listen no, no, to no, your very, program again. It's very <laughs> nice, actually. I, I like it. It's a good accent. And well, how successful were you as a boxer? Were you beating about a bit or were you okay? No, no. I had, I, Jerry, I had about 30 odd fights. And I, and I think I won about uh, 26 of them. Our own uh, up in the northwest here, our own. Uh, uh, very good boxer, John Duddy, unfortunately. Was yeah, that's right. He comes from uh, yeah. Derry City, doesn't he? Yeah, he was beaten very gnarly on Saturday night. He went down to on San Antonio to fight a Mexican. Which yeah, I, that's right. I, that but... takes a lot of nerve, you know? <laughs> Any man who goes to San Antonio to fight a Mexican, I know. you know? But he, well, he, he was gnarly, def, gnarly defeated on, on points, but that was a great uh, great performance, actually. Aye, but there's and, one or two good fighters now from Hop Bobby Derry, ain't he? Indeed, yeah, because uh, there was a time when there was nothing else to do here. Uh, the Spider <laughs> Kelly, remember the old Spider Kelly? Yes, uh, poor Billy Kelly, who was Billy the Billy Kelly. O- that's right. Yeah, there was two of them. There was a the father and son. They that's the only, right, the dad and son. That's the, right. the only father and son who ever won the British uh, Empire. That's right. You're, hey, you're right there. And poor Billy died, you know, just recently. Did he? Did, what he, the son? Yes, he did. Yes. Did he? My God! Unfortunately, hey. yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. He's gone, but, yeah. But uh, but you, you sound as if you're in f- fine fettle. Oh, I'm I'm okay. I keep myself busy about you know, and sometimes I go to the milk cup. Uh huh. In, in Korean, yeah. In Korean, I go there. They ask me to go there, and I always go there. 
and uh, talk to them out there, you know. Oh, so great. Excellent. But you're more concerned about the banjo girls. That's right. <laughs> the banjo max. And somebody All right, told then. me that you knew them. No, well, you see, probably the figure that I would have. <laughs> He would, wouldn't he? I know. He <laughs> All right then. Anyone out there who knows who the Banjo Max are, we'll 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 uh, we'll, we'll get the information across. Ah, uh, uh, Jerry, Jerry, you're a gentleman and a scholar. I don't know. About that. Wait, what was that? Sorry. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Oh, sorry. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Emma. Emma. Oh, that's okay. Is that about this? No. Is, no, that's okay. No. It's just another call coming in. I thought, it right. might, I thought it might have been about the banjo, Max, no. in which case I would have kept you on. Ah, lovely, Jerry. Thank you very much for talking to me. You sound great. You sound uh, great. You sound like a 40-year-old. You sound like Roy Walker. I, I, <laughs> Jerry, and I feel like it myself, you know. I met Roy Walker the other day. He looks, did, did he? He looks great. I know. He looks great. He, talks, he's, he talks well, doesn't he? He's, he's great. He's, uh, he, I, I like Roy, Roy Walker a lot, actually. Jerry, but he doesn't talk like you. He doesn't talk like me, he talks like you. And, Jerry, uh, where do you come from? I'm from here, Derry Stroke, London, Derry. Yeah, I was born here. And Derry, were you born in Derry City? Yes, indeed, right in the city centre. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm a little city boy. Yeah, good lad. Anyway, Jerry, nice for you to talk to me. I was talking to Roy Walker the other day. Um, no, it was a good while ago now, and he was kind of, you know, he, he, that catchphrase he used to do, do, it kind of haunts him, you know. That's right. And he says, it's just terrible, he said. <laughs> Every time I'm sitting here, people, I know. people always come up to me and they say, that new guy. <laughs> it's not as good as you. I know. And I he know. said, it's terrible. What am I supposed I to say? And then as I was sitting there, a woman came over and grabbed his, grabbed his, uh, his arm and she said, Roy, that boy did catch me. It's not as good as you. <laughs> he looked around at me and said, see what I mean? I do. <laughs> oh, Jerry, you're a good lad. You're a good lad. Anyway, see you later. Jerry, nice to talk to you. And listen, I'm always listening to your programmes. Always. Good, good man. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry, Thank for you. talking to me. And Bye-bye. Hope you, hope you live Bye. to be 200. <laughs> I will do. Shut up, pal. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Isn't he great fun? OK, hello. Good morning. Who's hello. That? Is that you, Jerry? Yeah, it is, yes. Uh, that's, a good in- uh, that's a very interesting man you're talking to there. Certainly was. Yeah, he, so- he, sounded- he sounded really young, didn't he? Do you, uh, do you know some, pe- some people who are 80 sound as if they're 80? I what never- is it, Roy Walker, is it? Is it? It's not... That wasn't Roy Walker, no. 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 I know I know what you mean. Uh, but he, 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 is, he is a young... Face man. Yeah, well, what about yourself? What kind of a man are you? You sound a little bit confused to me, I have to be. Honest I know, with you. I know. Uh, you know the vets, the vet, the veterinaries. The vet- I've got a budget. You... Um, the fellas, you no, know, coming off it, oh, no, it's like a wee skull day. Yes. But I had to give it, you no, know, it's How long we're losing you just a wee bit? Uh, can you hear me? I, am I on a, Oh, no, you're. My, sorry, some, we're. You, you, listen, uh, we'll, we'll we'll ring you back uh, because we we can't really hear you. Uh, the, the, that line you have is pretty bad. I am on a. I see. I had a go on a mobile phone. One of them. I don't. Well, turn turn around. Turn around a wee bit. It's only it's only slightly. Oh, right, 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 right. That's better. Stay there. Yes. Okay. So you've uh, got you've got a you've, you've got a budgie which is molting. As four years, I no the fires is coming off it. No, it's like a wee school. No, it's the fires are all coming off it. Yes, that's uh, a problem. Uh, a problem for the budgie, in, indeed. And, and the vet, there's no vets, vets, dogs and cats and things, but you can't get a vet that will look after a board. It's very difficult. Well, I can't see any reason why not. I mean, but I've never, to be honest with you, I've never seen a man sitting in a vet's uh, waiting room with a budgie. No. I, I never have. It's, it's always indeed. full of cats and dogs. That's yes, right. Well, well maybe, there's some el- to... maybe there's some elementary reason. I mean, I we... No, we... no, it's, no, it does, it's nature thing and stuff. No, it's healthy in ways, but it's, you know, you get a dog that means things, you know, and cats and stuff. Yes. But the, the vets not look after a board because they, they don't know, I own the vets, and the vets will say, no, they don't know nothing about a board. They don't know nothing about birds, don't vets. Uh, well, no, you see, that maybe maybe some... Give it medicine or, you know... Yeah, because they have to get a tonic or something to call it a tonic. I think vets don't like dealing with birds because they're too footery. Uh-huh. A bird is footery. It's very difficult to get medicine into a bird, you know. You get his wee beak open. The bird was landed on me, you see. I was down in Antrim. The bird was landed on you? And I had under the pet shop and got this budgie. And what happened was I met this man and he said to me, What do you call the Irish? What was it again? The Irish keep fit fanatic. I said, I don't know. I just keep putting on I said, I don't know that one. He says, Jim. Jim. So I called the budgie Jim. 
guy who's Keith Cup for now, Jim. The Irish Keep for Fanatic is called Jim. I thought G Y M was G I M, Jim. All right, then. So you call the budgie Jim, but you spell it G Y M. Boy. That's important to the budgie. I don't know what to, I don't know what to say to you. I mean, uh, how old is your budgie? Four. Four. I wonder is that old for a budgie or young? I I suppose it's expectancy. We're, we're losing you again. Listen, hmm? we're losing you again. Sorry. No, you're distorted again. Listen, we'll ring you back maybe see if we get a better line. A tonic maybe no way. Who's the board man of Alcatraz? Yes, uh, Robert... R- Robert Stroud. Robert Stroud, yes. Aye, uh, and he, he, he done all the things, the canaries and things and stuff. He did, yes. He was... I have uh, his, his book here, no, what then, the reading it. Uh, oh, bird, uh, Stroud's bird, bird diseases. Is that's that what it's true. called? Yeah. I, I've killed a lot of... That's right. I remember when I was at university one time, I was a mature student at university, and you mm-hmm. know when you, you've decided that the degree you're doing isn't any know, good for I you? Know. I was and, up in Cool Rain myself. I well, know where you're well, coming from, yeah. Well, you know what it's like up there. And I was going, I was going into a different faculty and the turn around and they're trying to push me into science. I <laughs> said, I don't know, I don't know. Come on any time I wanted to. Yeah, well, I, I had to meet the dean and uh-huh. all sorts. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I give up completely after a year or two because That's I really futile. And then, yeah. uh, you see, what you do, you have to go up anyway to get your grant. You see, so I used to wander around the library looking for things to read. And I found Stroud's Bird Diseases, and I said to myself, Yes, right. boys, I said, That's the book that was you written by the library. Birdman of Alcatraz. I sat and read, I read it. For, I read it for about three or four days. I'll tell you what, if I could remember any of it, I might be able to help your budgie. I know how to, I I know, know, I know how to prevent box. scurvy and pigeons. Listen, we'll have to go because you're, I can't hear Sorry, what you're saying. Yes. God bless you. Good on yourself. Bye. Bye. That man doesn't sound entirely sane, which is why we have to ring him back. He's the man for me. Two tight-eyed brain-fried misfits who lived in a shack in the back of the Bodark Wood. A cat old guy and a crockett girl worked hard at staying stoned as best they could. Coming up at night, they were high as a Christmas moon. Coming down was the fear in the four walls of their room. They were two hardcore junkies, and they stayed drunker than a bunch of monkeys. And there were barrels of laughter with no time left to lose. They had nightmares and needles with the stones and the beetles, and they kept all the straight-laced businessmen confused. And the days went by with a red band and a blue. Well, Ivy was grown or their heavenly home and her only companions were the chickens and the doves. When the law had a maid, they got laid in the shade on her face was the grace from the good Lord up above. And making love in the woods was peaceful most of the time. But revolution was the last thing on their mind. They were tough, foul-mouthed and lazy and they ate biscuits and gravy and they wore blue bell-bottom jeans and platform shoes. They slapped at the insects while they laughed at the rednecks. They kept all the straight-laced businessmen confused. And the days went by with a red band and a blues all right. They wore black suspenders on all day benders when the world was changing and the kids were running wild. They got gray haired, sat in rocking chairs, built a great big cradle for a newborn flower child. And they never grew up and they never moved to town. But they kind of faded away when the boat arcs got cut down. They had bad luck and good times. And cold beer and pork rinds and Sunday funnies were the only word they knew. They had nightmares and needles with the stones and the beetles. Kept all the straight-laced businessmen confused. 
Yeah, they were low down and worthless, but they were nice on the surface. They got by just fine on whatever they could use. And in trouble, they got deeper when they grew their crops a reefer. Because business and pleasure were two words they got confused. And the days went by with a red band and a blue hay. great song. I get many requests for that uh, from various people and that's a song called uh, Red Bandana Blues by a singer, songwriter called Adam Carroll, C-A-R-R-O-L-L As I say to people, uh, Google him and uh, there's various websites you can get his material if you like. Uh, Michelle is a, a lady who writes to this programme on a regular basis uh, she had a great day yesterday, she said it ended a bit rough, mind you I drank two bottles of wine and then had a couple of small glasses of Guinness <gasps> Suffice to say, I enjoyed my dinner so much, I had a second look at it. Well, you see, that's just what happens when you have a couple of small glasses of Guinness after two bottles of wine. I know, I've been there. Shouldn't have touched the Guinness. That's it, I'm going good living from today onwards. Anyway, I watched England getting hammered by Germany. It made my day. And then turned over to Glastonbury. What a great show, Dr John, Ray Davies. But the highlight was a band called Staff Benda Belili. I just couldn't stop dancing. I dragged my family to their feet. My husband said, It's not right, us dancing. It's kind of rubbing it in. Look at them. They're in wheelchairs, I replied. If they didn't want us to dance, they should be playing such flippin' brilliant music. I presume it was a requisite to have some kind of disability to be in the band. Well, actually, I happen to know who that band is. They're, uh, they're African, and they're made up of Kinshasa, sorry, Kinshasa, polio victims and street kids and they are you're right they're all just fantastic as a matter of fact I played a track from them the other week and I have it in front of me now it's called Jutan and I'll play that in two ticks hello good morning hello yes who's this it's Georgie hello Georgie hello um, Jerry, I'm ringing to ask you a wee question um, I have a lovely French girl staying with me for a couple of months this summer well send her up here <laughs> and um, she actually plays the harp um, in France Yes. And while she's here for the summer, um, she, she does concerts in France, and while she's here for the summer, um, she'd like to be able to practice so that I think you've to keep her dexterity up. So um, we've had a wee ask around to try and find a harp for her perhaps to use for the summer, um, either to borrow one or pass on where she could go to practice. And so far we've had no luck. So I'm just wondering, I heard someone asking about a banjo earlier, so I just thought I'd give you a wee call and see if perhaps you could help. All right, yeah, so she's obviously here for the summer, is that it, did you say? She's here, here for the she... summer till September. And you can't bring a, well, she's probably obviously backpacking that kind of thing, is she? She is, so a harp's not an easy instrument to, to bring uh, with you. So. No, no, and I, I have seen people uh, carrying harps about. It is not a great idea. It's, no. <laughs> you only do it if you have to do it. Uh, I know a lot of people who, who play harps, and uh, we see the, uh, the only thing is it might be quite difficult because uh, a harp's a very expensive thing. And, exactly, you know, yeah. I mean, I don't think there's such a thing as a cheap harp. Do you know what I mean? And no, people might, people no, the small ones I had a look, you can, you can buy, but they're, you know, three, four hundred pounds. But it's a small one she plays, the, the full size one. So I, she, uh, perhaps borrowing is impossible, but maybe somewhere she oh, could. Oh, no, no, maybe, maybe, like, some, maybe somebody's got one that they don't use anymore. And they, you know, maybe, you know, they, they wouldn't mind. But, but someone who's playing it all the time would probably hesitate to lend it to somebody they don't know. And, and willing to lend it for, lend it to her basically for the summer. That would be great, Jerry. See, there may, maybe people have won up in the attic, you see, and might need that's a bit it. of a bit of a run over with a damn cloth, you know, and tune her up, or, and away you go. That's it. Or perhaps someone might have have one where she can. She does classical music and you know some Irish ballads, so yeah. she would even like to go and practice. I don't know in a in a pub or a bar, maybe if, if someone right. had one. Yeah, and then maybe make a few quid in the in the bargain. Well, All right then. Be a bonus. All right then. Okay then. Anyone who's got a harp that, uh, or knows anyone who is willing to lend. The, what's the young lady's name? Pauline. Pauline. Okay. Yeah. All right, then, give us a ring here, 0845955678, and if we hear anything, we'll be right on to you. Thank you, Jerry. Not at all. Cheers. Bye-bye. Great. Okay, bye. Bye. There's that band uh, that were on in uh, Glastonbury staff, Benda Belili. This is, this is they, as they say. But it won't play, but it will now in a minute if I fiddle with it a bit. Why is it not playing like that? Mm. Excuse me a second. 
Sometimes these are a little dodgy. Here we go. Why is that not playing? Hmm. I'll play something else and get back to it. can't get that to play that's so annoying hold on a second i'm looking at this thing here and i say to myself why is this not playing excuse me i have to try another thing sometimes these things are very temperamental but you see my hands are blurred as they fly across the machinery as you probably have guessed um just heard you talking about how great the dufferin arms is in killy lay uh i just thought you might like to know that jarvis the lovely wee barman best barman in ulster is no longer with us he was a lovely person with time for everyone. Oh, I'm so sad to hear about that. I remember him. Oh, I'm so sad to hear that. This is the one. Why will it not play on the other thing? It only plays in the one above it. 
am I supposed to surmount these difficulties? That's that band staff, Benda Belili. You may have seen them on uh, Glastonbury last night, and that's uh, 
Kinshasa polio victims making the best of disability. Uh, some great music about. A gentleman writes to me and said, we'd greatly support, uh, appreciate it if you had mentioned this event on your radio show. We are a group of volunteer blues fans, and this is our eighth year in Ballyduggan Mill in Down Patrick. This is the Down Patrick's Blues Festival in the courtyard in the mill at Ballyduggan. That's uh, next Saturday. Uh, look at all the people who are on. Mary Coughlin, uh, the apartment, uh, great band, Sunday the 4th of July. Hmm. And there's a band uh, I can't name because of uh, broadcasting restrictions, uh, certain words in it that we do not use on Radio Ulster. Hello, good morning. Hello. Is there someone on the line here? Hello. Anne, how are you? Hello, Jerry. <laughs> Hello, hi. Anne. How are you today? Not too bad at all. You sound bright and breezy. Oh, thank you. Right, what uh, What have you been up to at the weekend that made you uh, so we cheerful? Were out, we were out uh, at a barbecue and we were doing a wee bit of dancing and I had a little drink as well. Hold on a minute, barbecue, dance, drink. That yeah. sounds like, you know, the ideal weekend in a way. <laughs> yeah, very, very good. I hope you behaved yourself. Oh, very much. And we were way more smiley yesterday. I hope you didn't wake up with any regret. No regret. <laughs> <laughs> Je n'ai rien. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so just before I forget, uh, people are ringing to tell me that the Banjo Max, the gentleman I was asking about the Banjo Max, is a woman who comes on your show, it says here, called Kathleen McGarvey. Of course it's Kathleen McGarvey, and the other lady is her sister Mary. That's yeah. Mary and Kathleen McGarvey. I know the Banjo Max lady. You see, you, you, you think you don't know Banjo people, but you do after all. You do. And what about you? What can we do for you today after your weekend of, of I don't know what, celebration? <laughs> you wouldn't want to know, Jerry. All but right, the you went with us. You had enjoyed yourself. Where where was all this happening? All this. Well, uh... we were down. We were down in a wee place called Lack, down the Fernana, and we were also in the up in Ross now, like yesterday. You were travelling, uh, yes, sir. And we we well, well, we were we do we bit we bit around <laughs> here and there. But Jerry, do you know what? Do you know what I phoned you? I uh, I I was listening to you that just this morning. That little lady called oh, Shanna. What? Sorry, and what's the wee, that? The wee woman of the asthma. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, I've I've got a cure. If if she would like to take, uh, like to accept that. Okay. Uh, well, I haven't got it as such. There was a certain person gave it to me because I'm asthmatic from as from as a wee child of eight year old. Yes. Now it's um, just to take the hairs, you know, Jerry, out of the, uh, the centre of the cross of the donkey. And oh, put oh, them... no, 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 hold on. You have to take the hairs out of the centre. The centre of the cross of the cross of a donkey, which is on the donkey's back. Yes. And the reason why it's there is because Jesus rode into Jerusalem with That's it. correct, <laughs> That's correct. And right, uh, to right. Put, to put the hairs in a wee envelope and keep it under her pillow. Right. Keep it under her pillow. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to tell you, I got it. There was a wee fella give that cure to me, and I have never looked back. Are you serious? I'm serious. Well, what were you bad, were you? Or, you I was. Know? I've, I've been very bad at asthma for most of a child of eight year old. And you never look back after you that? Never look back. Well, you see, well, you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, who in the right mind would think that that would work? But, you know, it worked for you, didn't it? It worked for me. And, you know, that lady who rang, I, I'm sure she's, well, she sounded quite desperate. She was very she annoyed. Did. And she, what well, harm? It was a trial, Jerry. What harm? But I mean, it's the old story. Where would you get a donkey at this time of night? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's the hard part is getting up to the donkey and getting the hair off it. <laughs> But you see, people might cheat. You see, it's a thing you have to do. It's a thing you have to do yourself, isn't it? You have to go up to the donkey and take the. You could take your wee scissors and cut. Well, it's actually the, the hairs are the cross hairs of the cross, just, right? In the middle of the cross. <laughs> <laughs> the donkey mightn't want to part with those, you know. <laughs> just boys, there's a boy up there. Look, taking the hairs out of your cross. Jesus. What? The? Hey, get away at them! <laughs> this is a boy with a pair of scissors. That's all he's looking. <laughs> That's all he's looking. And uh, all right, so it worked for you. I hesitate to pass that on, but I mean, you know, right. okay, why not? Hey, put, put, tell, her to, tell her to get somebody to put them inside the wee envelope. An and envelope put them underneath her pillow. Well, it doesn't matter what kind of envelope it is. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> An old gyro envelope, maybe perhaps. <laughs> well, you see, but who am I to talk? Sure, I'm a man who was cured of styes by a, a widow's wedding ring. Oh, good man. My mother brought me up to a woman in County, County Donegal up in the hills. Yes. And I was blind, practically. Oh, I used lovely. to have four and five, six styes at a time. I was in agony oh, when I was about 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. All right up until I was about 18, actually. Yes. I, I must have been 18. I must have been 18. Think well, about I it. My mother was bringing me up to 
to get cured when I was 18. <laughs> <laughs> but she brought me up. She says, here, come on up to this woman up here. She'll soon sort you out. Yeah. And I went up to this 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 uh, little farmhouse, little woman on her own, you know, an old, old doll. An old doll. You know, and the outside toilet, the old thing, you know, oh. the, old, the, the the pot over the pyre and the, you know, the stew bubbling away <laughs> and the teapot on. Yeah. And uh, hardly a light in the place and um, half a dozen cats. She told me, she says, I, and she, she, she took this wedding ring. Uh-huh. And she said, I'll just rub that over your eyes now, son. Good. And she, yeah. she gave her a bit of a wipe. She says, that's you sorted, she said. <laughs> and I never had one since. That's brilliant, yeah. So who am I to talk? Well, now, now so that, yeah, I suggest yeah, that, that woman, get, get those scissors and go for that donkey. Go, go for it. <laughs> well, thank <laughs> you for that. That's the most novel cure we've had today. Right. Thank you very much for that. I hope it helps that wee lady. I certainly do, too. I hope so, too. All right, then. OK. Bye, bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. See, these things work. What's wrong with this thing here? Do you know, every once in a while, a thing acts up on you. But anyway, not to worry. Uh, it's a machine playing you up, Jay. I'll tell you what. It's, it's got to the stage now I'm beginning to doubt my own sanity. Because <laughs> the thing tells you it's working, but nothing comes out. It's just one of those things. And it's, it's nothing you can do. You can do nothing about it. Hold on a second. I'm just looking. That's it. I'll do this other one here. Listen, you go and get that, uh, get that donkey sorted. <laughs> All right. I hope, I okay. hope it helps, sir. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Bye. 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 And here's, here's all the music here and I going on. On the Monday morning, says a man to me, he said uh, at the end of last year's annual Dylan Fest on the Loch in Donegal, in uh, Moville. This is an annual thing. Uh, it's, it's celebrating the music of Bob Dylan. There are only two Dylan Fests on in the world. One of them is in Hibbing, Minnesota, which is the birthplace of Bob uh, Dylan, of course, Bob Zimmerman, and the other one here in in County Donegal in Moville, and uh, there's a lot of strange rumours going about. You see, Bob Dylan himself is appearing in Limerick on Sunday, and uh, apparently, unprecedentedly, he's taking Saturday and Friday off. Apparently, he has no plans for Friday and Saturday, and there are people are suspecting that maybe, perhaps, there's a slight chance he might pop in. Anyway. A young girl from Derry called Nicole Bresnan was taking a shower before she and her boyfriend Bob were heading off after the Dillon Fest last year. He decided to slip out to Maville's picturesque shore walk on the banks of the salmon fishing Loch Foyle. He'd been planning to propose to Nicole during the Dillon Fest but wasn't sure how he should do it and there was little time left. Then the idea came to him. The tide was out. He gathered up all the large white pebbles and rocks he could find and he put them in the shape Marry Me. He knew that the tide would be going out and they would shortly be underwater. Before he went to their st- self-catering accommodation at the cosy college in Moville and waited for Nicole to get dried and ready, when she was all done, he suggested one last walk along the shore on that beautiful sunny morning. He took her down the steps just past the putting green cafe and with a wave of his hand he said, Well, what do you think? Nicole thought he was talking about the view and she said, It's beautiful. It's a shame we have to leave today. He said, No, the water. The water, said Bob. That's beautiful too, said Nicole. Look in the water. Look in the water. And then she saw the marry me sign. Ah, it's for you if you want it, said Bob, said Nicole. It took me ten minutes to say yes because I was in shock. But the most important thing for Bob was that I did say yes. And they're getting ready to go down again this year, this year's annual Dillon Fest. It's the end of this weekend. And Sorry, the end of this week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's, uh, it'll take place in five of the town's pubs, the Rosatos, Cachalmala, Barracuda. Maguire's and McGettigan's and St. Eugene's Hall in Maville. So if you have nothing else to do this weekend, go to Maville. It's all happening there. Bob Dylan fan, if you are. Yeah. Off you go. On mon banquet est trop où il me colle des agis au plus je suis malin et plus il me casse le dos qu'est-ce que je dois faire pour obtenir un petit bout du magot Je vais chez le maire demander des subventions Mais les fonctionnaires font une manifestation Qu'est-ce que tu veux faire contre la colère de l'administration Qu'est-ce que tu veux faire contre la colère de l'administration Et quant à la CEDIC, je demande des allocations Au dehors, les flics me collent une contravention C'est vraiment pas chic, pour payer va falloir que je trouve des ronds Sans 
vin sous le stéto Ou peut-être assureur Bienvenue chez les escrocs Je préfère chanteur Même si c'est le métier qui m'a mis cabot Je préfère chanteur Même si c'est le métier qui m'a mis cabot That's hard enough to sing in English, never mind French. That's great, that. That's a band called Fatal Mambo, a track called Majo Chérie, which is called In the Summertime. I spit on your mango, Jerry. Hello, good morning. Hello, Jay. You'll be our last caller today. How are you today? Not too bad. Are you well yourself? I'm all right. I, well, good. I suppose I'm as well as can be expected. <laughs> under the pressure. Under the pressure I'm under. <clears throat> Nobody knows what I go through. I know, rightly. Jerry, I'll tell you what it is. You might be able to help me. On Saturday past, there was a crowd of us going to a drive a horse and pony drive in Leitrim. Yes. And on the way up, I we made a mistake and took the wrong road. Yes. And we ended up up over uh, a mountain part, which was out over uh, Drummer Road and across uh, and back the back road into Dramara. But on the way, anyway, I lost a cushion of a trap. Y- yes. A green cushion that's not of any particular value to anybody, but it's a matching one and it needs done up. It's, it's more sentimental than anything else. Right. Uh, did you say a trap there? A you trap. Mean a, pony, a, pony trap. a pony's trap, that's right. Oh, right. Well, that would be a special thing. That would be fitted and everything, wouldn't well, it? Well, it would be, yes. And it's a, it's a proper old ho- horse hair one. A you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of them would be all built now, all made now with foam and that, you know. It's a, it's a very old cushion. It belonged to an old trap that I had years ago. Yeah, but you see, that would be a thing that would be lying about the side of the road. Nobody it, would pay they much would attention drive to over, it. They could drive past it and it's green. They could lift it and throw it in the hedge, <laughs> and it could be lying there. All right, then. So describe it again for the benefit of the people and it, tell them it, where it might be. It's an olive, uh, a sort of olive green uh, velvet cushion, and it was lost somewhere. It could be anywhere between the spa and out over Drummer Road. Now, people in that area will know where I'm speaking about. Yes, yes. Out over the Drummer Road and the back road into Dramara. We actually went off the road, and we didn't come home that way because the lorry was too big. We shouldn't have been, never been on the road. Right, OK. You know, and she was, we had a car or something like that. We had, to, we had to pull into the side and caused a bit of hassle. So we come home another road. All right, So then. it's on that road between, between the back road of Dramara and Drummer Road back to the spa. It could be anywhere along that line. All right, then. And we'll ask people to keep an eye out for that if we hear anything about it. I would be very grateful if it turned up. We'll give you a ring. Uh, the girl there will have my top telephone number. Sure, we have your number. Yeah, OK. No Thanks problem. Thanks very much, right. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Just a couple of wee messages before we go. Uh, Jerry, who sang that song you used to play with the line, we, the line, We Want Your Water, in the chorus? That was a band called Corrigan. And uh, Cure for Bad Breathing, a small glass of milk with one egg beaten, a shot of brandy and a bit of pepper. I assume that's pepper. All in one glass. My father-in-law swears bad. I'm sure he does. I buy you a diamond ring, my friend, if it makes you feel all right. I get you anything, my friend, if it makes you feel all right. Cause I don't care too much for money Cause money can't buy me love I give you all I got to give If you say you love me too I may not have a lot to give But what I got I'll give to you Cause I don't care too much for money Cause money can't buy me love Can't buy me love Everybody tells me so Can't buy me love I don't care too much for 
This is Beetlegrass, a song called Can't Buy Me Love, of course. We'll be back tomorrow morning, 10.30.